This is a passage from the most recent book I've published. It's called The Piano Players, and it's um, mainly about my father. In a sense, it's a true story, although my imagination has worked on it a little. It's a rather more uh, extravagant than uh, the actuality. But my father used to play the piano in silent cinemas. That means between... Indeed, before the First World War and uh, up to 1929 when the talking films arrived and cinema musicians, violinists, drummers, pianists and so forth, lost their jobs. Uh, this book was written in uh, homage to my poor father, kind of elegy for him. I fear there are generations that know nothing about this time and writing the book was an attempt to show them what it was really like. Uh, the story is, is uh, put into the mouth of the daughter of a man who earns his living playing the piano in a cinema, and uh, the locale is Manchester, so the accent you're going to hear is meant to be a Mancunian accent. Remember, this is the girl speaking. And again, this book reflects very much this concept, again, of exile. Well, it's uh, in a way. It, it, of course, the, um, it's about a Catholic family, and the girl who's telling the story ends up by going into exile herself, becoming a high-class prostitute in France. I suppose it's a kind of analogue of my own situation. I, too, am a sort of high-class prostitute. Mm, but I'd better not explain that. <laughs> anyway, here we are. Uh, the films he hated most were the comedy ones, Charlie Chaplin and Chester Conklin and so on, because playing was really hard work then, very fast ragtime style, no real letting up at all, not even for the odd kiss and cuddle. He liked best a film with plenty of variety in it, and the odd chance to slow down, playing a few chords with his left hand, while he had a swig from a bottle of Bass's Pale Ale with his right. A fat woman next to me in the front row spotted him doing this one night and said it wasn't right him doing that, that was not what he was paid for. He was paid to play with both hands at the same time, too. So what he did then was to switch into the key of G-flat or F-sharp, same thing, of course, and play some nice little arprons on the black keys with the base of the beer bottle. Is that allowed, missus, he said, and she said, cheek, that is. One night he played a little tune in the middle of the piano with his nose, while his hands were busy at either end of the keyboard, but nobody appreciated it or even noticed it. A film with plenty of variety was what he liked, as I just said, and this meant a, a railway train, a house on fire, a scene by the lake for lovers, galloping horses, a pair of wooden rickers in his right hand and quick chords with his left, a fist fight that did not go on too long, a ball scene with a blue Danube waltz for preference, soldiers marching down the street coming home from the wall, that sort of thing. Battle scenes were a big nuisance. He could get machine gun effects with the wooden rickers, but the big guns were not possible for him. He brought me into his special effects when I was nine, there was this Mary Pickford film in which she sings Home Sweet Home with the words coming on the screen just to show what she was singing. And the second night of the showing of it, he had me there next to him actually singing the song, but not very well. And then, of course, he cut me off in the middle of a word or note while we, he went on to the next scene, which was of two dogs doing a tug-of-war with an old pair of bloomers or something. My poor, dear, dead dad, how hard he worked and for so little money too. And all the time he worried about me needing a mother and only having a father. But he was finished with women, so he said, and not eating the right kind of food, too much fish and chips, too many shop meat pies. When tomatoes or oranges or apples were cheap, he would stuff those into me for my health's sake, as he said, but they only gave me diarrhoea. I drank plenty of milk off people's doorsteps, as well as our own, and didn't have many illnesses, only a lot of colds. He used to worry a lot about himself getting ill, because they'd get somebody else in at the Star Cinema, and probably keep them too, there not being any trade union for piano players to fight against the injustice of cinema managers. And he said to me, and me still not more than ten. Girl, you've got to learn. You've got to be able to take my place. You mean I've got to take piano lessons, Dad? Not real piano lessons, no, like I had scales and twiddly bits and such. Not that. I've got to find a shortcut for you, girl.